You've all held me back too long. I'm going to clown college. <laughs> In episode 43, we head to the lowlands to sample the beautifully presented Bladnock Samsara Lowland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Oh, and we talk about our dream whiskey trips and places that we'd like to visit once this crazy pandemic comes to the end. Which is what, next week, Dave? I, I, hope so. yeah, I, yeah, hope yeah. so. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. And as always, you can find some more whiskey based content on all our social media platforms at Whiskey and Things Podcast on Instagram and at Whiskey and Things on Facebook and the Twitter. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platforms as well. Cheers. Thanks very much. You're a star. <laughs> Home and away. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things Podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. Welcome to episode 43. I'm Dave Giles. And I'm Nick Kent. Welcome to the Whiskey and Things podcast. Here we are. Hey, hey, Nick, I've got an apology to make. Oh, straight off the bat? Straight off the bat. Okay. Pretty sure in the last episode I said bourbon instead of bourbon. Oh, you're definitely, yeah, you definitely did. Yeah. At the time, I thought, no, nah, I'll let that one go. It's been a while. 43 episodes in, I'm still getting my biscuits and my whiskey the wrong way around. Yes, yes, yes. And then we saw uh, Greg Drams of uh, Great Drams like post a picture of a bourbon whiskey today. It was a bourbon bourbon or something. It's a was bourbon like, bourbon. Something like that, yeah. He posted it on his uh, social media. So go check out Great Drams um, to see that. Bourbon bourbon, everyone. You're going to have to post a link in the show notes now, Nick, aren't oh, you? Oh, here we go. I've made myself <laughs> some more work already. That was all you. That was all you. I oh, know, I'm being informative to everyone. Being informative. Talking of more work, last week, well done, because we, you, you, you gave yourself a, a, a bit of a task yourself, didn't you? Well, I did. As I did when we were talking about the pistols. Yeah, you did. Uh, the, the, the Glenn Livett family had to have. Or was it John? Was it John? What's his, what was his name again? John Smith? It was George Smith. George, George Smith. Smith. Yes, yeah. of course. Sorry. Founder of Glenn Livett. Yes. Or, you know, one of them. Yes, you asked about where his flintlock pistols were, didn't you? And I was like... Yeah, I did. Check it out in the show notes, which I did put them in the show notes. But you did? Um, yes, indeed, they are actually on display in the Glenlivet Distillery. I um, love that. I'm glad they're there. I'm really glad they're there. That's uh, Where else would they be? Rounded off that story nicely. Yes. One other thing I've found out today. You know, I made a hot toddy last week. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Today is hot toddy day. No Apparently. way. Yeah. January it's the 11th today, right? Yeah, as we record. Yeah, exactly. Came to my uh, knowledge earlier on, Sam Simmons, a.k.a. Dr. Whiskey, um, wished everyone a uh, happy hot toddy day on his Instagram. Wow. Yeah. So, so have you have you had one then? No, I only found out 20 minutes ago. All right. Before we did this. Well, you'll have to... T- have I, I don't think I've got the ingredients. I don't think I've got the ingredients in. What do I need again? I don't know. Any whiskey and any hot kind of hot liquid. Just All right, so should be fine then. Yeah, you've got plenty of tea in, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple juice, hot apple juice, a few cloves. Boom. None of that. None no. of that. <laughs> There's no fruit in the Giles household. Yeah. Yes. I got some apple. I got an apple. Could I could I chop a bit of apple? I could, couldn't I? You could, mate. There's no there's no rules. There are no rules. There are, there are indeed no <laughs> rules. Anyway, <laughs> Nicholas. Yes, mate. Enough, enough uh, floundering around. Shall we uh, shall we move on? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get into this week's whiskey. Whiskey bots roll out. It's been a while since I've started with an apology. <laughs> well, it's just been on your best behaviour, haven't you? Yeah, I've not been too bad. Anyway, Nicholas, this week's whiskey. Bladnock Samsara Lowland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, 46.7% ABV. Now, this is quite exciting, isn't it, David? Yeah, well, remind me what Lowlands we've had before. We've done one before, back in episode 19. We've done the Glen Kinchy 12 year, I believe. Yes. Yeah, just down the road from Edinburgh. We like that. We really like that. We did like that. We like that a lot. But uh, this was a gift from uh, our good friend, friend of the pod. Rish. 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 We've not done this distillery before, so I imagine uh, imagine yeah. there's plenty yeah. plenty of you to tell me. Imagine yeah. you've been, been researching this all day, have we, Nick? A little bit, a little bit. This is a lowland. This is solo, Dave. It's almost on the Isle of Man. It's oh, really? solo. 
you know, if we were playing Scotch Distillery Limbo, this may win. What yeah. are you doing with your pen? <laughs> Tapping. <laughs> <laughs> is that a podcasting? Is it? Is that you've seen someone else do that? Have you? I like hearing background <laughs> noise. You know, hisses of fans. You know, my fridges, fridges, um, things bashing bouncing. a pen. Oh, I've lost my lid now. I've just bashed it and lost my lid. Oh, oh, oh. No. oh but anyway, no. back to this. Yes, it's in the, uh, the southwest tip of Scotland. Just the tip. Um, just the but, yeah. tip. Bladnock Distillery sits on the River Bladnock in. Bladnock, Scotland, <laughs> um, just south of the Galloway Forest Park, which um, looks like a lovely place. Lovely place. That was an answer in one in the, one of the quizzes we did on uh, the Whiskey Show. That's how I remember. Oh that yes, I remember now. Remember that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. The uh, distillery was founded by John and Thomas McClelland in 1817. Um, so they're actually celebrating their 204th year anniversary this year if my maths is correct um yep looks good looks thanks. good nick thanks mate ding um yes 10 points for kentendor yes this is one because it's so old it's uh, one of those distilleries which has changed hands a bunch in history you know and um shut down and there's been misfortunes and there was world war Two in the middle um oh yeah that so happened as well that happened as well so along it's Long its history, it's been owned by Bells in the 80s and it's taken over by a United Distillers group who were Guinness, um, who modernised it a bit. But um, moving a bit further forward or towards us, in 1993, the distillery became privately owned by Raymond and Colin Armstrong, who were brothers. They found it while they was on holiday. Like that. Decided, decided to, uh, you know what, let's lay down some cash on this distillery. Why not, bruv? <laughs> I like Why that. Why not? Let's just get a distillery. <laughs> Bring it back for mum. <laughs> Yeah, um, and actually spent several years finding and replacing the old equipment. Nice. And then, uh, yes, and then it was reopened for production in late 2000. Wow, they spent some time on it. Yeah, and uh, around that time they released an eight-year-old single malt. Well, actually in 2009 they released that. But anyway, but later on, let's fast forward a bit more, the modern era. Um, the distillery was purchased from the Armstrongs in July 2015 by an Australian entrepreneur... Called Good word. There. Yeah, it's an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Um, David Pryor. Um, Pryor is thought to be the first Australian ever to buy a Scotch whiskey distillery. No way. Way! <laughs> yeah. Um, the distillery resumed production in the spring of 2017 um, with new equipment. Nice big five-ton mash tun. Yeah, six Douglas fir wooden washbacks. Cheers. Yeah. Two 12,500 litre capacity wash stills. Yeah. Yeah. Want me to go on, Dave? Two nine and a half thousand litre capacity low wine stills. Oh, oh no. Tell me oh. about it. Yes. Um, and then in late 2016, Pryor officially relaunched Bladnock and announced their three new expressions created from old stock um, by their master distiller, Ian McMillan, which one of them is this one, the no age statement Samsara and the 15 year old Adela and the 25 year old Talia. Are they the names okay. of his daughters or something like that? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you about the samsara in a bit. What okay, that means. yeah, yeah, of course. In July 2019, check this guy's name out. It's, fa it's fantastic. Dr. Nick Savage joined... Oh, or, or is it Savage? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you know? Have you, have you researched that? Is it definitely no. Savage or is it Savage? Well, I know a Savage. I know a Savage. Well, Jack you never know. Savage. Yeah, Doctor. Right, then in 2019, Doctor <laughs> Nick Savage <laughs> joined the Bladnock Distillery as master distiller. Nick Savage formerly worked at William Grant and Sons and as a master distiller at <laughs> the Macmillan. Oh dear, um, McKellen, well, you mean? <laughs> master distiller at the Macallan. Wow, I, should, I would have had to make a massive apology next week if I left that yep. one in. Yes, so uh, yeah, Bladnock is one of the oldest and one of the largest privately owned Scotch whiskey distilleries. So nice. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. Um, so there we go. Samsara was uh, released in 2017, right? Yes, yes, it was. Yes, and Samsara actually means rebirth in Buddhism. Wow. Okay. Right. Yeah, I wasn't expecting something like that. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, which um, which obviously fits the uh, how the how the 
you know, the, the distillery had been going through a rebirth. Exactly. I'm See? guessing that's where they went for. Yeah, I actually want to look at what the other ones mean. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put it in the show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. I'll, yeah, that's I'll a great it idea. in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, good idea, good idea. So, so there's no age statement on this either. I hadn't noticed that when I looked at the bottle, I'll be brutally honest. Mate, the bottle is fantastic, isn't it? Oh, the Look bottle this is... bottle. Let's talk about the bottle for a little bit. Big old square, almost like a decanter. Decanter style, for sure. Yeah, decanter style. Lots of glass around the area where the whiskey is in. It's heavy. It's heavy, everyone. It's, it just feels expensive. Um, it says reasonable. it's a limited release. Is that because this is the 200th year edition? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they just did a certain amount. Because this, this label says maybe celebrating two hundred years. So maybe this yeah, is it a, must be. maybe this is a branding thing that we've got a special two hundred two hundred year anniversary edition. Yeah. Well it looks bloody lovely. And it comes in a it, wonderful um, yeah, box. Wonderful box. Great cork stopper. Oh, don't get me started on the cork stopper. It's a lot of squeak, not much pop. It's almost got a little bit of ring to the pop. Oh yeah, there I'm, it I'm is. Doing, I'm doing I'm doing mine again. Hang on. Oh, you! How comes you've got such a pop? <laughs> oh, because I there you go. Right, I went to the side. Oh, I you, just go. I try and go straight up. You go straight up. In at in at the side. Sometimes a better option, though, Nick. Sometimes, mate. Yeah. Sometimes is a better. But it's option. a massive. It's it's huge. It's almost like two, I think it's like two inches. Yeah, the stopper. The stopper is massive for the uh, actual for the size of the cork. The, the stopper is. Is um is yeah it's almost like a hockey hockey puck next because it looks like a mushroom doesn't it, it looks does, like, oh, a, it does a look like a big toadstool but in, anyway anyway <laughs> it does look it does look great and uh, as soon as you open it it smells fantastic so um forty six point seven percent it doesn't it doesn't smell too strong not gonna lie I'm using my Bladnock uh, Glencairn so it might not taste as good as in the whiskey and things Glencairn good point but good point I feel like I should have let the viewers know that. You know, oh. I, I, I'd already poured, but I'm imagining you had some private time with this the other day, didn't you? So. Bet, well, earlier on today, I had some special time. Well, I had my uh, I had my my photo shoot with it this afternoon. You know, oh, did you? obviously I have to get did the you? pictures for the gram and all that kind of I feel, stuff. I feel like we need a little jingle for every time we talk about Nick's special time. I need to like I need to record some some nice bass to go along with it. Don't yeah, I? Some, mm -hmm. some, wow, wow. Some, <laughs> yeah, some they yeah, some wow pedal on there. <laughs> there's, there's trying some, to make more work for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing. So he'll love that. He'll absolutely oh, love that. Classic day. Oh, well, you go. were clearly thinking it yourself, though, weren't you? You were clearly I last week. thinking it I yourself. Last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about that. So now I've yeah. said it anyway. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So as you said, no age statement. Um, but they do do they do a ten year, they do an eleven year, they also do like a fourteen year, and you know a few others. So I think this is, um, yeah, the ten years around. Oh, I'll tell you the price of this. It's around seventy seventy five quid a bottle for this one. Um, mm, mm, oh yeah, a bit dropped on my finger there. Um, but I think there are some like. 10, 11 year old whiskies in here. I'll explain that now. Um, what makes this special is the fact that in here is a marriage of whiskies aged in ur urban barrels, maybe whiskies aged in bourbon barrels and red Californian wine barrels. Did, the, did they Both elope at Gretna Green? I don't get it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you said it's a marriage. Oh. Gretna Green's down. <laughs> Gretna Green's down on the south part of Scotland. I thought it might be nearby. Anyway, I don't know where Gretna Green is. But there we go. Um, so yes, it's not a finish. It's not a red wine finish, for example. And I think they can't put the age statement on there because I think this is probably a mix of their ten, eleven, fourteen, or whatever they've put in there to be the bulk of the whiskey. But they've put the uh, the red wine matured in there, which was probably in there for a smaller amount of time. Maybe, I don't know, off the top of my head, eight, six years or something. But we don't know. We don't know. Whiskey! Oh, I love the smell of this. This is another one I'd love a scented candle of. Not going to lie. Oh, yeah. It's, that, it's, it's, it's very Christmas cakey, dried fruits. Um, it's a lovely gold colour. Wa well. Walnut on the nose. The walnut? Yeah. Right. Um, well, let's get fruity stuff. Apricots for me. 
apricots. Oh, yes, loads of apricots. Apple, you can you can sense the red wine yeah. in there. Yeah. I yeah, can yeah, sense yeah. the headache coming on. Red wine gives me a headache, everyone. But also orange zest, citrus. I got that earlier on by dipping my fingers in there and rubbing the alcohol away. And it left this lovely orange zesty smell in my hands. It was lovely. Let's try that, Dave's having we? a rub. Dave, wave him around. Now just wave him a bit. Don't get it all... Yeah, now have, now have a bit of a sniff, Dave's. There it is. You're right. As soon as you do that... Yeah, a bit of a citrusy... That almost smells like a bourbon. Hmm. I also got a bit of cherry earlier as well, which was quite that, bourbon-y. I literally feel like I, my hands are covered in Woodford Reserve right now. Lucky you. It's good. It's yeah. Good. Yeah, I mean... So there we go. Smash it. A bit of vanilla as well. Yeah, I mean, that's... Taste. that's it, it is really a, a very special smell, that. Um, mm. you, just had, you just got your lips around it. I'm going to do the same. Mm. I, I may have over-poured this. I got quite excited when it's... You've got loads, good. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. Fresh cut grass for me, off the top. That citrus again. Oh, there's a smokiness in there I wasn't expecting. Really? Not like peat smoke, but just a, a nice cigar. When, you, when you're in a room and someone's smelling, smoking a nice cigar, it's that Ooh. kind of smell. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that on the old tongue. I'm getting it quite, it's quite tanniny as well. Actually, not quite, slight. I get that from red wine. Maybe that's a bit of an influence from that, or maybe that's just from the oak. There's a long Ooh. finish on this. Mm. Herbal. I'm getting parsley on the finish for me. Yes. What was what was the whiskey we had where it opened our saliva ga- glands? A few, oh, you, yeah, I'm not going to remember. You're not going to remember. But it was one we had where, as we uh, afterwards, like my mouth is now filling up. Um, we had a guest while we were talking about it. Yeah, it, I, it might I, have been Billy. I, I think, think it, it's with I Billy. I think it was Abbott, one of the it? ones we had with Billy. I think you're right. But it's it's got a similar vibe to that. Yeah whatever the one that was. But mind you, I was thinking this as I was smelling it and now as I'm drinking it as well, I wish I'd opened this on Christmas Day. This is a really, you know, we got it for a Christmas present. So actually, this is a great round of fireplace whiskey that's not too overpowering in one particular flavour. Yeah, um, it's very pleasant. Oh, it's really drinkable. That's And for a 46.7%, isn't percent is not taking the back of my throat off either. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? We were also gifted. Thank you very much. Rish. 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 Um, we got Glenn Cairns with this, but he also gave us a, um, a Bladnock water jug. You can do it, are you? I'm going to drop a little bit of water in this. See what happens. I'm going to top it up a bit. Top it up a bit here. Yeah. I've done the same. Uh, look at this. Little, little water jug. Cheers. Little splash. That's brought out to me on the nose. That's, that's brought out the nuttiness. Ooh. Oh, Nick. That's so nice to drink with a little bit of water. I enjoy that a lot. Just a splash. Mm. Yeah, it makes it just a bit more manageable, doesn't it? Yeah, and it wasn't unmanageable before, but that's that's an exceptional drink. One thing about Bladnock as well, I'm liking. I went in a shop, obviously, today. Oh, yeah. Um, they also, I love this, they also sell the new make. As really? A yeah, 30 quid a bottle for the 50 CL. Well, that's tempting, isn't it? That's very tempting. Because like we got the Bimba new make, I like seeing the beginning and the end product, you know? How the maturation's kind of uh, changed it. I love that kind of thing. Yeah, but do you need a full bottle of that? Yes. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> because I haven't been drinking the Bimba one because I haven't got much, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so so this is about, seventy, as you said, between 70 and 75 pounds, which is... It's on the steeper end of a... Of a uh, it's a treat. It's a treat. Yeah, it's definitely a treat. Yeah. But it is really good. You're not going to... If this is on your shelf and you get it out for a treat... Do you know what? I also think this is not... It's not entry level, but I feel mm. like this is a gateway drug. Like I feel like this... If you're trying to get someone into drinking good quality scotch and mm. you give them this, there's enough there to... like Without it being... As I said, nothing's too overpowering. No. There isn't there isn't a single flavour there that's too overpowering. And how nice it is on the nose as well. The experience of this is a really good drink. And the presentation's lovely as well. Yeah. I, I, I actually I really think does this does matter. For me, that really matters. This would really get someone into the idea of looking at scotches, I think. Yeah. Um, it's exciting, isn't it? It's yeah. just nice to look at. It's got a good big stopper. It just feels good in the hand. You know, it's all about the experience with this. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. When we got sent that package, I'd never heard of Bladden. Oh, maybe I've heard no. of them, but I didn't know much I, about I, them. You know, 
I hadn't, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think I had heard from them at all, uh, other than maybe in those quizzes. And there were so many distilleries <laughs> being branded yeah. around that we weren't, weren't learning anything about them for sure. But when that turned up and the package was so good in terms of the visuals and the aesthetics, so pleasing, I'm glad that it's not been let down by the liquid. At the end mm. of the day, it's a drink and it needs to be enjoyed. This is this is really good. Also, this would be an amazing old fashioned. I think it is that bourbon side of it. You know, so when you when you do rub that alcohol off and it feels like a Woodward Reserve. I mean, it's an yeah. expensive old fashioned, but I think it's going to be a glorious one. It kind of has a peppery end, like a peppery finish for me as well, like a spiciness to it, which I yes. think from, from the oak, um, which I think would cut through the bitters and stuff. Yeah, you're probably right there. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I feel very privileged that this is in our whiskey collection, Nick. Me too. Me too. Very yeah. much so. And, um, I, I, and I think that's probably the highest praise we can give it. That's a lovely place to end. Why they ever let two? Well, do, do you know what though? I know it's I know it's expensive, but or not. I would buy this again for an expensive whiskey. To, for me to say that sh- shows what I'm mean. because normally if it's a, if it's a bottle that much, I'd be mm. like, mm, well, if someone gets it to me, I would love it, but I'm not going to spend that on a whiskey. I would buy this again. I'm kind of discovering like a lot of this kind of price range, sixty, seventy, seventy five, is where you can kind of get something really nice, and then over the top of that. Is it really worth it? You know, yeah, diminishing I mean, returns. I don't know. We 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 talked um, about we talked about this recently privately. I think it was when we had our little Christmas party about how the what we now think as of, of as an expensive whiskey has changed. Yeah, the price has gone up a bit. The, pr- the price yeah. has gone up. We now are, are more willing to spend a little bit more. And I guess it's the same when you know. Let's let's relate it back to what we do as our day job, right? So, for me, a guitar. When you start getting over eight hundred pounds for a guitar, that to me is where you're like between the six hundred and eight hundred pound. Okay, this should be this should be very good now. Between right. between eight eight hundred and two grand, you'll see that you'll see that go up. Yep. You'll, you'll see the quality you will feel the quality you should feel the quality difference between a 600 pound guitar and a 2000 pound guitar once you get above a 2000 pound guitar you don't you can be paying 20 grand for a guitar and not notice a difference as much as you will notice a difference between a two grand guitar and a 600 quid guitar right yeah yeah and, and i feel like that's the same here once you get to that 60 70 pound mark it's like okay these are these are good What's now the difference between here and £200? Can you notice that? Beyond that, are you really going to notice a difference? Yeah. And it's, usually, it's, it's down to age again, isn't it? Yeah. The, you know, the older ones are the more expensive. Same with whiskey. But you can get a decent one. You know, I think like the 65 to £75 pound range is in guitars what I would pay for like a bass, which is about 12, 13. 12, 1800. Exactly. That's what you want to pay to get something you know it's going to be right. Exactly. Every and, time. And, and the six, eight hundred, eight hundred pound guitar is probably the 40 quid bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Still lovely. It's going to be very, good. Very tasty. Yeah. Sounds great. You know, looks great. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you've got your, uh, your balsa wood ones. Yeah. You've got your ones you got by in Argos. Yeah. You're back there. Yeah. <laughs> Your beginners, your beginners set guitars. The Yamaha Pacificas. They're exactly. actually really great guitars. The Yamaha Pacifica was a great guitar. Yeah, it's anyway, on a tangent, this is whiskey and things, everyone. This does happen once in a while. We'll uh, talk about guitars and stuff. Anyway. Things. We'll talk about the things. Anyway. Things. <laughs> yeah, great whiskey. Thank you very much for, sh- <laughs> for, that, for that wonderful <laughs> present. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really glad I got a bottle of this. It's fantastic. Yeah, me too. Can't wait Beautiful. to share it with someone. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> You're listening to the Whiskey and Things podcast. So, yeah, talking about um, sharing experiences and sharing whiskeys, Nick, uh, you know, obviously, weird times in the UK right now. and uh, Weird times everywhere, mate. Weird, weird times everywhere. Exa- well, ex- exactly. Mm. Um, but, you know, equally, you and I, after last week's show, had a sp- and we spoke about this at the end of last week, had a little plan. Like, we're, we're planning things. We're in our planning phase of what we're trying to do this year. And, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, we're putting together some cool shows and, but 
the plan was never for us to be doing everything remotely and we're still planning everything remotely because that's the way it is right now and we've got some great guests hopefully going to get confirmed over we've, you know we've been talking to a lot of people some of them are already confirmed so we've got some good stuff coming up but the original dream nick the original dream <sighs> was to be able to get together and go and explore some of these places and visit them and you know, just just there, sitting there and saying, wouldn't it be great to share this together? Let, yeah. What What are you thinking about right now in terms of what, what would be your ultimate whiskey trip? Oh, my whiskey trip. Yeah. Oh, like when, I mean, when when this is all over, what's what's number one on your hit list of like if money's no object, what would you want to do, mate? Oh, mate, that's a good question. That's a good. Question. I think I do think about it a lot, and there's a few different ones, but there's a few different trips I want to go on, and uh, yeah. But for me, like some of our listeners might be aware of the Texas Whiskey Trail. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of that? Before? I have indeed, mate. I have indeed, mate. That'd be fantastic. There's obviously, well, obviously, but there are a bunch of distilleries over in Texas um, doing some really cool stuff, and I would love to go over there. They do this thing called the, yeah, the Texas Whiskey Trail. Yeah, it's made up of four different smaller trails around four Texan cities. Um, they have north texan trail which is around fort worth and dallas huge cities the hill county trail around austin one of my favorite cities in the world south texas trail in san antonio played a gig there once beautiful Can't place. Much about it. beautiful place <laughs> it was one of those arrive play gig leave um did you, did you not go and see the alamo trail. no didn't get have a chance to piss on it mate uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um and but, the south, uh, yeah. sorry and the south coast trail South Coast Trail in uh, in Houston area. Nice. Um, when you there recently, Houston? Last yeah, last July, last, two Julys yeah. ago. Two Julys. That is recent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. yeah. Press pause. <laughs> so, but yeah, there's there's 21 different distilleries on this Texas whiskey trail, and it's really cool because you become a member. And then you can just go visit all the distilleries. Like, oh, so it's like a club. Whichever one you wanted. Like, it's, it's kind of like a club. It's like a Euro Rail, Euro Rail Pass or whatever they are. When, when you're on your gap year and you buy a train ticket and you go around Europe and every train's free. Yes. In this case, each train is a distillery full of wonderment. Um, there are three levels of membership. Um, but the one you want is the Trailblazer. It's about $150 and it lasts for an entire year. Okay. Nice. Because there's loads of them. And it's kind of designed for people who maybe live in Texas who maybe can only go to a distillery on the weekend. You know, my dream trip would be go over there and do it in three, three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but yeah, with the $150, you get like a welcome pack with a Glencairn and a t-shirt <sighs> and all that kind of stuff. Distillery exclusives and, uh, and all that kind of thing. But um, what's another thing that's pretty cool, you get to, the more you go to, you accumulate points. You know, which means you get rewards. Uh, club card. You know, club card <laughs> stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you get rewarded with gifts and stuff. Nice. Um, so, yeah, as I said, you can do it as a long, over a long period of time or you can smash out in three weeks, um, which is totally doable. Is this is this so, connected to the Whiskey Tribe? Um, yeah, in a way. They actually have a distillery on the trail. Right, they okay. They are, yeah, if people might know, probably know. Um, well, not probably, you know. People might know, but I'll introduce you to it if you haven't. There's a great YouTube channel called The Whiskey Tribe, and which is based around Austin. And they actually were the first crowd-funded distillery in the world. Um, and their distillery is called the Crowded Barrel Whiskey Company, and that's just outside Austin. So, yeah, you can actually go and see that. And that's what that would be like one of the highlights for me. Yeah, and they've, go got, to that they've got a big vault as well, haven't they, with like all the whiskey in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another channel they both do. Uh, Rex and Daniel. Uh, it's called the Whiskey Vault. They have a whiskey like marketing school there, Dave. Wow. So you can pay four grand and go and do a marketing like course for however long it is and stay on the premises. And oh, mate, that's another one. Yeah. I'll probably like, <laughs> yeah, I'll probably need about three months to do the trail <laughs> and do the, uh, the marketing course. The, 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 uh, the, as long as your tourist visa will allow. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Please, Mr. Biden. Um, so, yeah, they're there, which will be another thing. And there's so many other kind of distilleries around the area I've seen on the Whiskey Tribe channel as well. Because yeah. that crowded barrel, I've over the last few years, I've watched it. I've watched them build it and I've watched it grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are, those are two guys on that channel who I go to like multiple times a week to listen to their reviews and stuff. Mate, get them on, um, the, get them on the pod, massive, mate. Get them on the pod. Mate, that, 
That'd be the dream to get those guys on the pod. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for me, for me, the dream trip is the you know the Texas whiskey trail, um, mate. I'd love that. But what about you, man? What about you? What's on your list? Well, you know what? I'm going to bring it back again. I, I think that's a great one, and I'd be well up for doing it. If money was no object, I think I'd be up for doing that as well, just because, I mean, Texas is massive, right? It's bigger than the UK. Yeah. And we, the barbecue food. Yeah, all, there, all that music. stuff. And, and yeah, like I just think that would be, that would be culturally, is right up my street, like to go and explore that. And you love that. bourbon. I do love bourbon. Um, but the, you know, there's all, there's all the Scotch ones, which we could, yeah, we could talk about all day long. The, the different Isla one, like this, a four day Isla one and you've got the Highlands. Everyone bangs on about going and do the Highland ones because the yeah. scenery is just amazing. And, and we want to get around and do all of that. But for me, I'm, I'm looking at it from the point of view of money is an object. And actually when we What's can, realistic? when we can start going back to places, you and I aren't going to be able to get to Texas straight away. And even, Spending two weeks up in Scotland might be difficult to begin with because we're going to have to take on every bit of work going because it's been a tough couple of years. But what we can... Be shattering my dreams. Well, not really, because if, <laughs> once once we did Bimba, and I know I keep going back to that, but it was a good day out. Well, once we did that, we got back and we started looking at more English whiskies. Oh, and yeah. the good people at the Cooper King Distillery, which is in Yorkshire, did a whiskey map of England. Oh, uh, yeah, they did. Yeah. And there are currently 24 distilleries making whiskey in England. I think there's some more been added since this map was, was made. And I feel like we could have a couple of day trips where we tick off a couple of these. And this is the kind of thing where we could dash out, do a day, do a day, come back, maybe stay over one night overnight and then come mm -hmm. back, you know, crash in a travel lodge or, or see if we can get someone, stay at someone's house. And then they're it's all- It's like the old days, It Dave. is like the old days. Or I could tie it in with our tour, with touring and all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's, let's say this- <laughs> It'd be like Alice Cooper. He plans his tours around, around golf. the golf course. Ex yeah. Well, yeah, why not? Let's do that as well. There's, yes. there's, a, there's three not far away from Oxford. You've got a couple up near you, near Manchester, three in Yorkshire, one in mm. the Lakes, you know, you know, one in Durham. Yeah. Three in London, one in Kent, couple out in, near Norwich, uh, three out down on the south on the southwest, and you just think, oh, this is achievable actually. And I love ticking things off. I love checklists and ticking them off. And when there's only twenty four, that's achievable. Yeah, without spending a ridiculous amount of money, we could visit a lot of these. And because you know, when we did the English whiskey tasting set at the whiskey show. There's some interesting stuff coming out. I think we'd be pleasantly surprised with some of the stuff because they're not they're not as uh, rigid in what they have to do compared to the Scotches with the laws that are in Scotland. So they can they can do things a little bit different. So for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I don't think there's a set track. Maybe there is a, a tour, but we it's something we can plan. And I like the idea of of, of us just doing ticking quite a few of these off early doors once. Once a Plus bit. Plus it's just lifted a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And we kind of dip our toe in the distillery uh, distillery visiting world. <laughs> and we, and in we, the distillery pool. So, so, that when, so that when we go and do the whiskey trail in Texas, we know all about distilleries, Nick. Oh, we'll be experts. We'll be experts. We'll have seen it all by then. Man, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and we'll be able to talk a good game and we'll be able to go, oh, well, when you, when you visit this, this distillery has got this kind of still. And, and, and did you know all about, you know a lot of this already, but I would have a better understanding from visiting. I was going to say, man, I've watched so many videos in lockdown. I'm like itching just to get into those places and be like, oh, oh my God, that line exactly. arm is sloped. Look at the reflux on that. Everyone. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm well up for that. Um, so that, that's, that's, I think that's my answer to it is, you know, yes, I, I think you've nailed it in terms of the, dr so the dream, dream trip. trip the dream trip is going to, going to uh, Park Royal again. Yeah, basically. <laughs> at, at the moment, I will take that. I will happily walk down the road. I mean, you can walk home from there as well, mate. You can we walk home? You can. We um, did, didn't we? In, yeah. in fairness as well, I think, you know, how about a trip to Tasmania? Hey. <laughs> it's got to happen at some point. We'll have a pilgrimage back to uh, Omaru. Oh, to the, back uh, to New Omaru. Whiskey collection. But via, yeah. via some Australian distilleries and, and Tasmania. Yeah. Wouldn't that be yeah, great? Yeah, there's loads. That's the thing. There was some around there I didn't have time to go and see. Yeah. I just chose that one because I, you know, it's kind of on a good route home. Um, 
There's a lot of. I've, I've been doing a lot of research on Australian and Tasmanian whiskey at the moment, and there's a lot mm. of stuff going on down there. And Tasmania in particular, there's quite a lot of distilleries on a small island. Yeah. Um, or a smaller island compared to the, how big Australia is. So that, that just that on its own would be a great trip. Um, Can we yeah. afford Sullivan's Cove yet? Definitely not. Def- okay. Definitely not. Oh, great. Put that one on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, well. maybe one day, Nick. Keep dreaming. This time next year, we'll be... No, we won't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he means. Yeah, I know what I mean. Have we done booze round this year yet? No, no, we haven't, Nick. All right, well, uh, I think it's time for booze round. Booze round. Booze round. <laughs> so oh, happy. Been a long time. So <laughs> happy. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, what you got for me, Nick? What got you got everyone's for me? Favorite new segment. <laughs> I've only got one piece of news this week. Um, a lot of people might have been uh, been looking forward to this for a while. Let's see. There's a new whiskey film coming out, Dave. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's called The Water of Life. Aquavitae. Aquavitae. I think it was meant to be coming out last year. We all know why it didn't. But yeah, they're doing an, a special six-day launch of it uh, in a few weeks' time. They're doing a Burns Night celebration screening. Nice! Um, yeah, but it's over six nights. It'd be pretty cool. Um, Burns Night is a celebration of the life and poetry of the Scottish poet Robert Burns. Robbie Burns. Uh, and uh, it's on the 25th of January every year, because that was his birthday. So, um, from January 22nd until the 27th, the filmmakers are doing screenings of the film online, as well as live Q&A sessions with the filmmakers and the cast, i.e. people who are in the, uh, you know, talking heads and people telling stories in the film, etc. So, they're having two people each night, as well as a screening of the film. And, um, yeah, I think they're on at like 9pm each night, and it looks pretty exciting. Um, I've bought my ticket. Um, looking forward to it. From watching the trailer, it gives me the impression it follows the story of Jim McEwen. And we spoke about him a few weeks ago. I was going to say, that's a name I remember. Yeah. He's he's a bit of a legendary guy. He worked at Bowmore from when he was like 13. Yes. All right. So he's the guy... Sorry, nine. Probably nine. Yeah, even earlier. This is the Port Charlotte episode we talked about him, right? The Brook Brook Laddie Distillery, which also churns out Port Charlotte and another whiskey as well, isn't it? I can't remember what the other one is. Anyway, it's not relevant. Octomore. Octomore, that's it. Mm. Good yes, knowledge. He was uh, partly responsible for the rebirth of Brook Laddick, and that's kind of what they cover in this film, I think. That's that's the uh, the gist I'm getting. Um, I'm hoping it's a bit different from The Golden Dram, because that's another movie I watched a few weeks ago and actually spoke about it on the podcast. Yeah, you did. But remember. again, that follows Jim McEwen as well. I'm sure this will be different with different people and it's all up to date, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it looks quite exciting. It's a six-day pass. It's $25, which works out about £18.50. And you get a screening of the film and all the discussions for that. Um, and they're also offering a tasting set to accompany the film, nice. which is something else I've ordered. Ooh, treats coming, Dave. Treats. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you get six 25-mil um, samples in there. Um, like you got Brook Laddie, Classic Laddie, a Balvenie Doublewood, 12 years. These are all whiskies which are featured in the film. So you can either drink it along or, you know, do whatever you want with it. But, um, yeah, you get 38 quid for the six samples. It added up a bit for me because there's like a £7.50 post-season package charge, which right. takes it to about over 45 quid for six single shots of whiskey. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's about seven fifty a shot. It's a bit of fun, you know, it's something to kind of drink along with. But, uh, yeah, added yeah. up a little bit. But yeah. I think it's a lot of fun. And, um, if you know... Listeners, you might want to get involved as well. Um, head over to www.wateroflifefilm.com to find out more about that one. When everyone has to stay at home, why not? Six, yeah, nights, six nights of entertainment, bit of nice whiskey, beautiful. Yeah, you can just have a shot a night while you're watching it, you know. And um, some of the people who they're having on, on the Q&As are really, really interesting people. So, uh, yeah, highly recommend that. So. Fantastic. Well, um, yeah, so uh, wateroflifefilm.com for find out more. Uh, yeah. And I look forward to hearing your review of that, Nick. In a couple of weeks. Film of the yeah. week. That was a short but sweet booze round. 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 You're listening to Whiskey and Things. Not bad for a couple of Brits. Well, there we go. Which one was that? Episode 43. 
So, yeah, episode 43 in the bag there, Nick. In the bag. Um, in the bag. i got another shout-out to do, actually, Nick. Oh, just yeah. Wanna, yeah, after last week, remember last week you uh, mentioned Whiskey, a tasting course by Eddie Ludlow. Remember that? I did, yes. Off the back of that, on a whim, uh, Andy Lewis, who's one of our Patreons, purchased the book. Did he? Oh, yeah, I saw that, I saw that. And he said it's bloody brilliant. So, uh, get a good recommendation there, Nick. Good recommendation. Hello, Andy. Uh, we look forward to hearing more about what you're up to, uh, what you've been tasting and what you've been learning on that. Um, don't forget, you can also join in on our Patreon. You don't have to be a Patreon to, to send us messages by any stretch, but um, we've we got some stuff that will be planned for patrons over the next few weeks. So if, you like Andy, you want to help us out uh, and support the show, please head over to patreon.com forward slash whiskey and things. And uh, there's lots coming up. There's lots of goodies coming up for your enjoyment. Loads of good things coming up, yes. But uh, anyway, Nick, what we got planned for next week? Tell you what, just before we talk about next week, um, last week we did the Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve. You remember that? I do. It's well, lovely. yeah, Glenlivet brand ambassador, who I mentioned last week, Harriet Hendry, got in touch over Instagram. Oh, um, yeah? Yeah. Um, she said, Nick's Caribbean caramel apple hot toddy looks rank. Leave the cocktails to the professionals, you twats. <laughs> no, she did not say that. She did not say that. She said, uh, thanks for the shout out on last week's show. And uh, she also, like me, prefers coconut and pineapple flavours in cold cocktails. So she's recommended a little cocktail for everyone. It's called oh, the yeah. Tartan Tiki. It's made with the Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve. It's 50 mil of that, two dashes of Angostura bitters, 50 mil of pineapple juice, and top it up with peach soda water. That sounds really refreshing. Sounds amazing. So, uh, Nick, you'll put that in the show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. Fantastic. Right there. Right there. I'll copy and paste that one. Copy and Yeah, there yes. you go. Um, she also loved your scented candle idea, Dave. Well, she better make it happen. <laughs> and <laughs> The Glenn Lewis scented candle. I will happily be a sample. Uh, you know, if they want to test it on anyone, I will happily uh, have that here as a thank you for the idea. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, what we got next week, Nick? Well, next week, Dave, we're trying something a little bit different. Oh, um, yes, we I'm, talked about this. Of course we have. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not going to say right now, but hush, uh, hush. keep your eye out, listeners. We just got to nail a few things down. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool, and um, we hope people will like it. So uh, keep an eye on the... Uh, on the old socials yes, you know, for, that, for that next week. Next week. That's episode 44, Lewis Hamilton's racing number. Everyone. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. There we go. Can't believe we're there already. Anyway, thanks everyone for, for tuning in. Thanks for those who have hit the share button. Uh, thanks for those who have shared it with your whiskey clubs, perhaps. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we love yeah. all that. We Message love that. us with your whiskey, whiskey clubs. Yeah. yeah. We're interested in all your whiskey clubs out there. And uh, by all means, after Christmas, why not send us a photo of your current whiskey selection? Uh, Nick and I are both going to post photos this week of our whiskey shelves, uh, and we'd like to see yours as well. Post Christmas yeah. whiskey shelves. Hashtag. Yeah. Th- Get your Islas all in line, everyone. Get your <laughs> Islas in line. Are your, are, is your Isla shelf as good as Nick's? <laughs> find out. <laughs> Let's Lose find out. The dose. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there we go. I am expected to see Isla Fisher up there next week, Nick. <laughs> a ginger isla a ginger isla yeah the bowmore is quite gingerish it is it is you're right maybe we should put a little picture in front in front <laughs> as a bowmore of isla fisher or put sasha baron cohen next to it yeah that's doable isn't that it? Would do, put yeah. a clown nose on her she went to clown college everyone did, did she i didn't know yeah. that anyway yeah anyway Anyway, uh, she was also Don't in... Do. Was she in Home and Away or Neighbours? Can't remember. Anyway, it's not pro- not important. Uh, no, home, home and Away. <laughs> anyway, thanks Closer for listening. Closer each day. Closer each day. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> Whiskey and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions.